This is the spinal cord model. Some important structures to notice on this. First, if they were still here, you would have the 12 cranial nerves exiting the brain. There's just a tiny little bit of nub still left on those. 12 cranial nerves exiting the brain. Next, you can see some of the ventral roots of spinal nerves. On the opposite side of the model, the ventral surface has been cut away to reveal the dorsal surface. So down in there are the dorsal roots of spinal nerves. Various portions of the spinal cord are named based on the structure in which they lie. So for example, this section is known as the cervical plexus, the cervical portion of the spinal cord. This section, where you have these large nerves coming out that go to the arm, is known as the brachial plexus. Further down, you have the lumbar plexus, which is basically below the last rib and above the uh, os coxae. Below that is the sacral plexus, and that's in the actual sacrum itself. Some other structures to notice include intercostal nerves. Now, intercostal just means running between the ribs. So those are these nerves that go between the ribs. You have at the very base of the spinal cord, you have the very large sciatic nerve that goes out into the back of the leg. At the top, where the spinal cord meets the brain, you can see that just for a moment here it widens. That is the medullary cone. This portion of the spinal cord, just into the lumbar plexus, you can see here that the main portion of the spinal column becomes a point and fans out into these feathery structures. The point here is the phylum terminal. The feathery structures are the cauda equina. In addition to the spinal cord, there is a parallel structure here that runs the length of the body. This is the sympathetic trunk. The sympathetic trunk has a few structures, color-coded in pink in this model, that rest more or less between or right on top of the ribs. These are the paravertebral ganglia. In addition, up here on the neck, you have a large cervical ganglion.